Hello, Monsieur Ideme. Um, Ufo, it's when you meet to the Daki Summa for Tangy Company. I'm going to do Quemo for. Um, it may you me. <laughs> um, what else should I say? I've forgotten. <laughs> But by the way, um, my name is Edetu too, and uh, I want to thank you so much for turning around today to listen to me. I do hope that today's study or whatever we want to discuss today will be meaningful to you. Uh, when I was asked to make a preparation for the, this presentation, I was actually wondering what I was going to say. Well, obviously, it was a very vague topic and to talk about money. Nobody can talk about money, not even in a lifetime, because money is a very big and important subject that uh, uh, we can't even tell how big it is and because we cannot make all the money in the world. So there's so much money in the world that... Even if everyone in the world were to start making money, we will not make enough of it. The reason is because even the streets is money. You, you are money, but you don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe you know already, but maybe you don't have enough knowledge. That's why you're sitting here today to listen to me. I go around as well to learn from people who I think they know better than myself. And so that's why I'm here today. And I do hope that you will listen to me. Uh, my mom used to say something, and uh, how did that come about? Uh, it's simply because whenever she tells us to do some things, and sometimes we don't want to listen, so she will chase us and will run. And you know, she cannot outrun us, and uh, so she will sit down one side and pant. <laughs> and, um, it's also very interesting that uh, not every time that mamas will be there to, you know, to chase children about. Sometimes, you know, these days children will have to chase their mamas around and say, Mommy, no, come on, let's go. And uh, it's a, probably that's what I have to do today, to chase you, that, give you that little bit, eh, to push you, eh, and so that you can, uh, you know, also run with us. Um, my mom has a very popular proverbs that she used to say. And uh, I want to share that proverb with you, and probably that will be the beginning of our discussion. And a very serious proverb, I've carried it all my life, and uh, and this is what it says: "Ukuyu akero imanayen ibawambara." Ukuyu akero imanayen ibawambara. But she also has a the, the bad version of it, which she always says this way: "Ukuyu akero imanayen ibawambara." And um, I don't know, maybe you're not very familiar with the proverbs, uh, but this is what it means. Uh, a mother was supposed to have a child so that she will escape trouble. But after giving birth to a child, trouble came from the sky and from the ground and covered the mother. And this is what it simply means. When you have a child, you're supposed to escape some problems, some issues. Children are supposed to come up to help you run the race, go for errand. But when your child grows up and it's, it's not there, child, go run the errand. Child says, you know, a child, go do this. Child says, no, know, this one for you. But today, this is not the case. Eh? Today, you have escaped the Mbara, you have escaped the trouble because uh, your support for me when I was with you back then in Calabar has shielded through the Lord. So I want to especially thank all of you, mamas, and I can't mention names because I don't know who is sitting there. And it would be unfair for me to mention names, especially uh, maybe I mention, I can mention all, so it would be unfair to me. And so I want to say thank you so much for being there for me, for being a mother to me in those times that I was there with you back in Calabar then. I, I was just a child. I, I grew up in your hands. You loved me. You cared for me. You helped me. I know virtually I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have good people in the Deep Life Bible Church. So I owe whoever I've become today and who I'll become tomorrow to God and to the good people that I met at the Deep Life Bible Church. And so the church has been my home, I stay, and uh, virtually everything I know, I learned it from the church. And so I want to thank you so much. People say the church, the people doesn't care. 
I don't say that because I know the church cared for me. He cared for me, actually cared for me. And so I'm so excited to be a part of the Deep Life Bible Church. And a lot of you have heard that uh, probably there is no way Deep Life Bible Church. Well, if you listen to lies, you can continue listening to them. I'm a Deep Life Church. I'm still a worker and a leader in the church. And uh, I won't tell you my new position, <laughs> but I'm occupying a good position in the Deep Life Church in the UK. I still do the same work I used to do in the in nigeria back in the uk as well so i still believe in what you believe and everything i'm going to tell you today will not be different from what you know already but i'm going to stay steer it up to make it look uh, like a lecture to teach you a bit more but i, I want you to just go with me flow with me in the spirit you know and they forget about all that you knew already i know you know so much they, they say it's easier to train a child than to mean an adult the reason why people say so is because an adult would have experienced a lot of things in life. Experience would have changed the orientation. Experience would have changed the way you think. Bad experiences, good experiences. You would have, you know, you would have been maybe probably unhappy with unfair situations. So when people are out there to tell you something new, you feel really disappointed. You feel that distrust you're unable to look at something you know something new because already your mind is already made up and set so you can't really you know learn a lot from what is presented to you and as you know already i'm going to talk about something very interesting as my name is Eda Tutu and uh, i'm going to teach you or tell you something about how to make money how to make money I know money is a very bad subject and church people don't talk about money. It's only when they want to put a friend that they talk about money, um, which is wrong. The Bible says that we shall both call things that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. God says, I am the one that gives you power to make wealth. He said you will be the head and not the tail. He said you will lend to nations and not borrow. How will you lend to nations and not borrow when you are broke, when you don't have a business, when you don't have many sources of income maybe you just depending on salaries alone there is no one there is no civil servant that was rich civil service doesn't make anyone rich if you want to reach you need to be rich you need to break out and do something outside your civil service job there is no one that had one source of income and was rich these are simple things that we don't know people say if i give my offering god will bless me yeah, God needs to bless you, but there is something that you need to do that God bless you. Back in the day, back in Calabar, I prayed and I asked God for one question. God, give me money. <laughs> I used to ask God stupid reasons. And they sound stupid, but for me, they were very serious questions before God. And I asked God, God, give me money. And God told me, come. And I, I, I could hear the voice speak to me, and uh, in my mind anyway, not audibly, telling me, look, even if I send money from the skies, you will not pick it, I know you. <laughs> and I drop it on the way, you will not pick it. But there is no money in heaven anyway. So stop praying that money should come from heaven. Go do something. And so since that day, I was out doing so many things in Calabar, everything, I was everywhere. I was reading books, I was, you know, going to places. And people used to say I do blood money, <laughs> that I walk like people that do blood money. It's because I learned that God taught me that I should go and do something. So I do everything. And by doing everything, that led me to getting to know things, to know people, and that led me to traveling. I, I just want to become who I want to become. But I want to ask you a question. I want you to visit that child that you were, that little girl that you were many years ago. I want you to think about that girl, that 13 year old, that 14 year old, that 15 year old, that 18 year old. I want you to look into the eyes of that little girl. Talk to that girl and say, girl, welcome to my world. Let's have a chat. I want to speak to that girl and begin to think about that girl. That girl you were, that thought of conquering the world, of traveling, of becoming rich, of becoming wealthy, becoming strong, of mar getting married to a rich man, of you know, getting a big house and of living happy, driving a big car. Who stole that thought from you? Why did you let it go? 
Why did you throw it away? You know, as you grow up older, experience made you to drop and leave some things. Probably you wanted to follow the crowd. Probably you wanted to follow people. And you drop your childhood behind. There is one thing that nobody should leave behind is the curiosity of childhood. Don't leave it behind you. That particular thing that you had in mind to become, who you wanted to become, I want to tell you that it is not too late to become that person. If you keep to everything I'm going to tell you today, you'll probably be making waves that you never made when you were younger. There's a man called uh, 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 Sander, uh, I think that's the name Sander. I know him as KFC. KFC is uh, the man uh, that fries chicken. He worked months, he spent his whole lifetime working. I think he was about 60, he was retired with little money, he wanted to commit suicide. But he remembered that he could fry chicken. But he left, he left his home and started going, okay, he, he didn't even have the money, but he tried to raise some money to fry the first chicken. And then give it to someone, someone ate, and then from there to two people, to three people, to four people. As I'm talking to you, KFC is all over the world. By the time the man was 70 years old, between 10 years from the time he started frying chicken, he was a millionaire. His shops were all over the United States of America. And today, KFC Kentucky Fried Chicken is all over the world. The man is late, but he started late. I want to ask you a question. Is it too late to start to do something? I want to tell you that it's not too late. It's only too late if you allow today to pass. If you don't start it today, and then it's too late. But I'm so happy that you are here today. I don't want to talk to who you are today. I want to talk to that little girl that is inside you. It's that girl I want to talk to. And so, because that little girl inside you will hear me, the adult that you are, you are carrying today will not listen to me. And sometimes they have, I've tried this, it failed, I've tried this, it failed. But I want to talk to that little girl because I know that that little girl is gullible. Everything I tell that little girl, that little girl will hear me and will believe in me. I've learned one thing about going around to teach people and inspiring people around the world. It is a person that pays for attention and is ready to learn that will apply. A lot of young people have graduated from the university because they met me. And I'm so thankful to God for making me an instrument. A lot of people have started businesses. A lot of people have got married because they met me. But always being there as that kid, that bridge for God is the most important thing. And that's the very purpose that I was born. And so teaching you this thing is not by instinct, it's not by you know by anything, it's not by mistake. I knew that it's this day will come. And so but I want to show you simple things that help me. I'm not the very richest person, but I'm on track to become the person I wanted to become. And I'm still on track, truly speaking, and I'm on track. When I say I'm on track, I mean I'm on track. And um, so, but when I'm on track, it doesn't mean that I've achieved everything. But it just means that I know where I'm going. But if I know where I'm going, I have to teach other people so they can also start their journeys and come after me. I don't want to be that one person that knows everything that nobody knows. It's far be from me. I want to share knowledge, I want to share ideas. But I want to ask you, please, would you hear me? Over the years, we hate people who are rich. We hate rich people. When we say people, ah, oh, leave them, they are wicked people. They are blood money. They are this, they are that. If you get a rich man, you will never be rich. Don't kill your hero. Don't destroy the rich man in your church. Don't speak evil of them. There is a purpose, there's a reason why they are there. And uh, some people go around, they, they, you know, by witchcraft or by anything, they kill people, they go to juju, they kill people. A day will come, you will need that person, and that person will be gone, if you didn't know God. And so I, I, I was raised in that kind of community where, you see, people don't like rich people. <laughs> but if you go in that mentality, you will not be rich. I wanted to like the feeling of being rich. I want to sit down on that chair, rock on that chair, and think of what it would be if you had all the money. <laughs> if you were so rich and so happy. I want to think like a rich man. 
or oh, like a rich woman. You know, think like a rich lady. Uh, you know, here in the West, we don't call people women. <laughs> you call them ladies. If you call somebody woman, you're in trouble. <laughs> so, um, feel like a rich lady. That rich lady seated in that big office. You know, see yourself flying first class tickets in aeroplane. See yourself flying in the the best of aircraft. See yourself driving the best of car. Do you like Jeep? See yourself in that Jeep. See yourself, you know, becoming that very person that you wanted to become as a child, or even more than you can ever imagine. God said, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as you're so prosperous. The scripture cannot be broken. We are the ones that are breaking the scriptures. Obviously, we live every day in fear and thinking, oh, I wish God would do this. It's the will of God. Dear, it is not the will of God that we are poor. Poverty is not of God. If you see anyone that is broke, two things would have happened. Is that that the person did not pay attention to God's instruction? Or the person is not ready to walk? Even the Bible says anyone that doesn't walk should not eat. So today we're going to look at all these things together. And then we will learn together. First of all, before we start this class, I want you to say with me, I like money. Say, I like money. Say, talk to someone by yourself. Say, I like money. Say, money is good for me. <laughs> Tell somebody, money is good for me. No, to, uh, go around, tell people, money is good for me. I want money. I want money. I want money. Thank you very much for doing that. The reason why I want to do that, I want to just scatter that orientation. People hate money. Scatter it. Money is good for you. It will make you look good. <laughs> look prettier. You know, travel. To, you know, pay children's school fees. Do whatever I want, eat whatever you want, goat's leg, chicken leg, you know, drive fine car, go to places. You know, the Bible said that a poor man is not honored, even among his friends or his neighbors. A poor man is not honored. Or you need, even a poor woman, they, they won't respect you. I'm serious. This is the scriptures. I still give it to like when we were children. We like to go to a rich uncle's house. <laughs> The reason because when we get the, 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 his wife will kill chicken for us and we'll eat. We to the poor people families that we didn't invite us. We don't really like to go because they don't do a lot of all those cooking and there's plenty of chicken so we think. So even children would like to come for holidays in your house if you are rich. <laughs> so money is very good. And I do I hope you don't misinterpret this thing. I'm very careful when I'm talking about money in church because people will usually misinterpret me and so uh, Except I was invited, I will not teach money church because I'm more usually misinterpreted. So anyway, thank you so much. Let's go to the first thing you need to do. How to make money. Number one, people make money by stealing. Stealing. But anyway, the Bible says, thou shalt not steal. So automatically, you can't steal. So no, you can't make money by stealing. Even if you see a bag of money in front of your house, that is not a way to make money. Kick it away. You can't steal. Then, another way people make money is prostitution. No, the Bible says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. So, prostitution, you know, sleeping around to make money is no. As a believer, Sarah, you didn't do that. So, are there other options of making money? Okay. Option three of making money. People do rituals. They kill people to make money. They do sacrifice. They do blood money. They do witchcraft to kill people so they can make money. Option three, horrible option. Terrible. So you can't do it. You shouldn't even listen to anybody that tells you, oh, come, let me show you somebody. You just rub this thing. No human sacrifice money will come. Zero. Don't go. Oh, come, let us go and, and throw one egg at the road junction. Money will start coming. No. Come, let's wash your head and get bath here in the river. Be rich. No, don't even try it. Oh, come, let us go and do this. Oh, we, we give you this special oil. You pour it on in front of your shop and you rub it on your good. I say, no. To make money that way 
It has an end. It will spoil. Trust me. Oh, bring the sand from the front of your shop. Gather sand from the market and bring. We'll do something when you pour it. You have more cells. My dear, no, please. I beg you. Mbok, kunam. Eh? Kuya, I said, kunam. Make me for work. Because you don't know where it will end. And uh, that's why you shouldn't do it. Okay, now let's start the real ones then. This one, I like this one so much. The fourth thing you need to do is to buy and sell. Buying and selling. Buying and selling. And you can make money by buying and selling. And people say, ah, I don't have a capital. Why would I buy and sell? Well, I was, I was, I think, eight years old. I was in, in primary four or five when I started my first business. Where did I have the money as a primary four or five child to start my first business? Ask me what I saw. I used to sell groundnuts. I was a groundnut seller. I sold a groundnut in my house. That was when I started learning my business. So I don't think need a big capital to start. And sometimes we, we look for big money to start a business where we can start small. The best way to start a business is to start small. Look for a small amount of money. Even if it's a small 1,000, start with small money. Starting business with small money allows you to go through the ups and downs of the business so you don't lose money. Because even if the business collapses or crashes, it crashes with the small money. But if you bring big money into the business and it collapses, that is the end. And that's a big mistake a lot of people make. When they want to start business, they're looking for millions or 500,000 or more, 800,000, like plenty of money to put. And that's why it fails and you have zero. You will run, you borrow money and borrow and borrow and borrow and borrow and start that big business and it did not work and you fail. The problem was that you started too big. Start small. You start by selling small. KFC started by selling one chicken. From one chicken to two chickens. So you would have learned the process of selling chicken. So there was no way to make a big loss when you would have uh, uh, in the process of selling the chicken. You start small. Buying and selling is an easy way to make money. So you can buy goods from Abba and sell in Calabar. You can buy goods even from Eight Medem and sell in your house. You can go house to house and distribute these goods. You just have to be creative. I sold before. I did buy and selling. I've sold without money. I don't know whether the person I used to sell for is in that meeting today. And I used to sell for her. I go to one market. I didn't have money. to. I didn't have any capital. I went to one market. I told her, I know you sell such things, just give me, I will sell it for you. And she gave it to me, I sold it, I returned the money. And to the time I went to you and I handed it over to some people, they couldn't sell, so she recalled their goods. But all the time I was in Calabar, I was, doing, I was trading for her, and I made profit. That was the money I used to move to your state to do my program in your state. And uh, so that's very important. Buying and selling is one good way of uh, making money. The next thing you need to do is to refer customers and get commission. Another point, refer customers and get commission. Uh, referral services are so important. They call it jack of all trade. So you see yourself as someone who knows everything. I am a jack. Uh, for myself, for instance, for example, I'm a jack. I don't tell you all I'm going to teach you, I'm going to teach you things that work for me and work for other people. So you don't think, well, I'm just giving you a textbook answer. No, it's not a textbook answer. These are real things that have worked for me and have also worked for other people. So I'm expecting you to, to do it because I th it has to be something that we practice so you'll be able to practice it. So the, the simple way to do it with the referral is that the referral services or referring a customer and getting commission is that you just tell somebody, oh, would you like to? So, so the person tells you, oh, I'm really I'm interested. Do you like my, do you like this jacket? The person said, do you? The person said, yeah, I like this jacket. Oh, I, I, how much would you, would you have? The person said, I have uh, 10,000 to buy this jacket. And you go to the market and you buy this jacket for 10,000 and sell it that 10,000 to the person and then make 3,000. That was the easiest way I made money when I was in Calabar. Referral services are so sweet. You just sit down and the money pops into your account and you, you you don't know how it works. People ask me a lot, oh, how do you do this? And this? Ah, God is doing this for you. Yeah, God is the one that gives me the idea to go out and do it. But I was doing secret, secret things that people don't know. I do referral services a lot. I've made a lot of money from referral services. But when I say a lot of money, it's not that that money that will go and buy a city. No, I say small, small money that kept me going. 
and some of the things I've traveled, I've used to do money has helped a lot. A lot of friends have also made money from referral services. Referral services will work a lot. It's like sleeping. It's a sleeping business. It's a business for lazy people. You know, my family, they call me fool. <laughs> they think I'm lazy, but I'm not lazy here. I can be lazy in doing things with my hand, lifting heavy load. And I don't like doing hard things. I like to sit down and think of the simplest way to do it. So instead of having a big shop to stock shop and pay for it and pay for everything, I allow you to stock the shop. And me, I do the sales and I make the profit. So sometimes I make double profit. Double profit in the sense that if you tell, if I can tell, ask you what is the cost of your good or let's say, how much is it, Jack? Please tell me 10,000. I said, if I sell 10,000, how much will you give me? You say, I will give you 500. I said, okay, thank you. I will take that goods, Jack. I will go and sell it to someone for 13,000. I will make 3,000 on top. Plus that 500 you'll give me, and I've made 3,500 from that product. <coughs> so that's how referral services work. The next one you need to do is to open a shop. Opening a shop is expensive in color because you have to pay tax, you have to pay a lot of things, you have to pay rents and everything. So it's okay if you're happy to open a shop. You can open a shop and stock the shop. But opening a shop means you need to have a capital to stock goods. If you have the capital, I want you to go and sit down and research. You don't have to open provisions though. Everyone in the street sells provision. I want to ask somebody, if I had money, I would have opened a provision store. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a provision store, my dear. It could be something else. Just ask God, God, give me an idea. And God will give you an idea. <laughs> And then you go on and open it. You don't have to be a provision store because your neighbor provision store is working, so you want to open your own. No, what happens that two of your provision stores will close down because you don't have any, the threshold, the markets for it. So allow your neighbor to sell provision. If you have to sell provision, you need to sell what your neighbor is not selling. Stock more of what your neighbor cannot stock. That's how to sell. Or maybe you can go for wholesale while your neighbor sells retail. Or you stock specific goods. It's a win-win. Don't open a shop so that you can close your neighbor's shop. It's not really the best way to start a business. If you do that to start a business, there's a trouble that you will have a bigger competition that will come in and also sweep you out of the market. But try to do a win-win and create that niche for yourself, that area that no other person can come into. Another thing you need to, is, is to do is to... You know, to sell your idea, teach people, teach people, teach people. You can, you know, if you know how to make cake, if you know how to, you know, tie hair tie, teach people, you know. Now, you can teach it even on the internet, you can teach it everywhere. Call it the hair tie teaching class. It doesn't have to be free. Stop offering some pitch services free. Let people pay for it. Yeah? Let them pay for it. It is not a crime. Church people, pay, go pay for service, services. <laughs> you know, sometimes we want to organize program for church people, they want it to be free. And that's why they learn it, they don't apply it, because it was free. I'm sorry, I have to say it. It was free, they didn't take it serious. I came to Calabar recently and I was teaching young people how to do computer, internet business and the rest of them. How many of them took it seriously? They didn't. But do you know how much I was paid to teach that similar thing on the internet? For 30 minutes? You will scream if you hear how much I was paid. And and so, but I thought it was free in church, but it wouldn't take it serious. So, when people pay for services, they tend to apply it. So, uh, you have to go and pay and lend those services. And let teach people for money. Let them pay for it. I don't mean you should come to church and start teaching in the church. No, no, no. What I mean is that teach it outside. If church people come, let them pay for it. If near your neighbor come, let them pay for it. Shine your eyes. <laughs> and let them pay for it. Anyway, thank you. Let me not go too far with that. The next thing you need to do is to is to if you know how to make cake, use your skills. Use your skills. Make cake. If you know how to make cake, decent cake, you want to do welding, you want to do artwork, you need to, you, you know toys, you, you can make toys, you can make hearts, 
All you need to do is branding. I will teach you branding in the next course if I'm invited. I don't have to invite you anyway. But if I'm invited, I'll teach you how to brand your product and make it... <laughs> and make your product sweet. So that when you when your product goes into the market, it's different from every other person's product. And that's called branding. And so you need to make your cake different from every person's cake. You need to make your cake work different from every person's work. And so that's what you need. And then the next one you need to do is to do network marketing. I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know network marketing. I wish I could see you. I wish I was standing before you today. Oh my God. But, uh, but anyways, that's fine. And how many of you know network marketing? And you know what they call recharge and get paid? Recharge and get paid. It's called, that's network marketing. Do you know what it's called? AIM Global. You know, long reach. You know, there were other ones that sell things, you No, know? they call them network marketing. They ask you to bring one person, you you have two people, three people on your list. Network marketing is good. It's a silent money earning model. And uh, people are making real money from network marketing. But you need to know how to talk to people. You know, this is our, you know, I, I'm not just talking about you. You know, this is our... In, when we're in the bar, like, we restrain ourselves. We don't want to talk to people because we think that when we touch them, we will sin against God. <laughs> it's not so. You can do business with unbelievers without actually committing any sin with them. But all you need to do is to know the boundaries and say, this is how far I can go with you. I, I've done, I've done, most of a lot of my transactions are with unbelievers. And, um, but we know that we are just business people. You don't cross boundaries, set boundaries for them, no? If you start saying things I'm not interested in, I will shut you down. Sorry, please. For the last, very, very last time, they are saying that. If you try it again, that's the end of my business with you. And so we need to set out these principles and let, let these principles work for us. Go out there. If you sell only to born again people, you will be poor. There are not a lot of born again, many born again people in the world. <coughs> so find out that, you know, join network marketing and sell to everybody. See now, they are all children of God and they are the ones keeping your money. Yeah. If you don't have money, your money is in the hands of somebody. Just can't collect it. How do you collect it? You can't beat him. You can't kill him. You can't break into his house. The only trick you need to collect money, your money from people, is to sell something to them. They won't know. It's a secret. Sell something to them, and they give you your money. And if you don't sell something to them, they won't give you. And you can't beat them. <laughs> so that's the secret way to do it. Uh, so network marketing, I will spend time to teach you network marketing if that time comes. And then we talk about buying of shares and government uh, treasury bills, government bonds and treasury bills, buying of shares. That's what we call shares. You know, all these companies in, um, in Nigeria and outside Nigeria, they sell what they call shares. Shares is a way of inviting you to become a co-owner of a company, to become one of the owners of the company. If you want the, to become a co-owner of the company, you have to buy shares. And so, with that, shares are open up for sales every year. And But be careful when you're buying shares. You need to seek professional advice before you can buy shares. That's what we call treasury bills. Treasury bills is a silent milking money. It's a silent pot of money in the country. People don't know. Treasury bills, if you have up to 100,000 Naira, after this study, after this teaching, why am I a call? I will tell you where to buy your first treasury bill. Treasury bill, they pay you some like up to I think 10% or 20% every year when you put your treasury your money in that treasury bill. So it's like a silent saver for you and it generates money. You don't even need to buy a shop. You don't even need to work. Just pay your treasury bill to the government. You're not paying to me or anybody. You're paying straight to the bank. And the government is like you're lending money to the government. And the government pays you interest in the end. You sit in your house. Imagine that you had one million naira in the bank. Maybe let's say you had a one million naira in the bank. Or maybe let's start from ten thousand. Let's say okay, no ten thousand treasury bill is from a hundred thousand. So you have a hundred thousand and you invested it in treasury bill and uh, in the end at the end of the year you have a ten ten like a, a ten thousand out of it. So if it is a uh, one million that you invested, in the end you have a hundred thousand. Let's say you invested like uh, ten million in treasury bill, ten million naira. 
in treasury bill. In the end, you'll be making one more million every year, which means that you don't even have to work. Your one million naira will just walk into your bank account. So that's how treasury bill works, and then so you just enjoy your money. And the next one you need to do there is to build a house, build a house and rent out. And some of you are waiting on to say, oh, when I retire from work, when I retire, I will build my house. I think it's not a good idea. Trust me, it's not a good idea. I, 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 I've already learned that very early in life that I don't want to build my house when I retire. And then um, the earlier you live your life, the better. Don't leave, don't postpone your future. Leave it now. Nobody knows tomorrow. They trumpet me sound. You leave everything for Antichrist. <laughs> you know, a child asked me what the uncle who will take your money when the trumpet will sound. I told him, I, I told her I don't know. Obviously, I don't know. I don't care. I have to eat everything I have to eat today. And do everything. When I say everything I have to eat today, I don't eat my capital. Please don't get me wrong. I live a happy life. I try to be happy with my family at the present. And uh, do everything I have to do. Teach people. Go around. Live the life I wanted to live within my income. Let's go bless sisters. So build a house and rent it out. It's a different way of making money. Don't live in all the house alone. Even the rooms you don't have, you use as dog shoes. <laughs> the shoe is not paying the rent. Dog boxes in the house. You have one room that you're stocking things in. It's been there. No one is using that room. Rent that room out. Make money from it. True, what you don't need a way. to gather things. You know, I'm so sorry, mamas. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But anyway, I have to tell you the truth if you would like to hear from me. You know, sometimes women stock too many things they don't need. They create one extra room to stock unnecessary things. Please. Rent that room out and save that money. It's a way to make money. And then another thing is if you become a rent agent. Who is a rent agent? A rent agent is someone that decides to show people where houses are. People, when people want to move from their house to a new house, so it's your job to go out and look for houses for them. And you don't even need to do it every time. You just need to tell people, oh, if you see a house in this area, tell me. So people will tell you all the houses around your area. So when people are moving, you tell them, okay, move from A to B. And they pay you 10%. Let's say somebody moving in a house that costs 200000 Your money is already 20000 waiting for you. No sweat. Cool, cool money. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so you just sit down in the house and the money comes into your hands and it's paid. And the person has to pay before he moves in. There is no brother, no sister. Oh, I'm brother. Well, if it's brother, you can give a discount. Yeah, oh, because you're my brother, I'll give you 5% discount or 10% discount. And so uh, I paid rent, a rent agent in the church. I paid a rent agent help me to get a place. I paid for it. I paid the agency fee. So why wouldn't someone pay you for an agency fee because they're a church member or they're outside? So it's a good business that you can do. Even church members can patronize you when you become a rent agent and they uh, go around and get houses for people. People rent through you. Another thing you need to be doing there is to become a supplier and find goods to supply. Become a supplier. A supplier, you don't have to own a shop. Maybe you can liaise with a shop in Abba. Go to Abba and find the products in Abba where you can, you know, supply to people. And then stay in Calabar and become a supplier. People order. You stay in between. Or oh, if you want this, I order it for you. You stay in between and order Abba and supply in Calabar or you or any nearby place. Become a middleman. Become a supplier. And you, this thing, some of this, becoming a supplier, sometimes you don't even need money. You only need to know the so the the warehouse the owner of the shop the warehouse in Abba and then you know the people that are going to need that shop in Calabar or in you or in Abapuyo or wherever your this shop will be so you become like a middleman you buy from you you don't even need to buy you only tell this person what do you want the person make order through you you get the order and deliver but what you need to do is to be sure that you are doing the business with a trustworthy person so that you don't get into trouble even when there is trouble Find a way to sell it. Business has a lot of headache, and so you can't escape it. It's like a life, it's like marriage, it's like having children. You love to see them. But you will run the race, you will quarrel, you talk to your mouth, too. but they, you love the children. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> absolutely really love I, I when I sit down I remember how we used to do it my mom she would chase us around she would talk till her voice would croak <laughs> but she loves us we were necessary trouble so business as well is a necessary trouble so because you love to you know to have that money you have to go through the trouble to have it just like any other thing like having children like having a husband a husband is a trouble himself so, <laughs> so but people you love your husband so why not to love a business even though there is trouble and some of us because we don't, we don't want any trouble at all so we don't want to do any business I have to go faster so that I can let you go. I have so much in my list here. And so in order to you link people to shop and take commissions, I've said that already, become a distributor, I've said that. And then teach children, organize lessons in your house, have a lesson, home lessons for children. It's a big way to learn money, earn money. I've done home lessons. Home lessons is so easy. Teach them anything, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Children will learn. They pay one one thousand. It's extra money. I don't know how to. So some of some people thinking, well, where will I have time? Church, 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 church. I don't know that one. Your leaders will tell you how you manage that one with church. I don't want to spoil things here. And uh, <laughs> thank you very much for that for sparing me. Not I don't want to talk too much. But find a way. Whether you're in church or outside church, do whatever you have to do. When I was there, when I was in Calabar, I was always in church. At the best I could, I was always there. And I was also doing other transactions around. And when you look for me, you don't see me. Maybe I'm doing something else because I know the money was necessary for me to take care of myself. And then turn one room in your house into a guest house. If you are living in your own house, turn a room inside your house to a guest house. When people are traveling down to Calabar, they can, you know, lodge in your house. Turn one room or, or maybe one of you, you know, those of you that have built your house, your own house already, turn one of the rooms into a guest house. Set it. How do you, you, you get a guest house set up? Just paint it. Make it look nice. You, know? you can turn it to self-content. Fix its own toilet. Fix everything inside it. Hand, uh, wash and basin. And um, anything that you think will make the person comfortable. Nice bed, nice carpet, painted wallpaper, furniture, flowers, a chair. And with that, you set up one guest room. When someone is coming from Calabar, uh, from other parts of the state, and they're looking for a hotel to stay, they can lodge in your house and they pay you. It's just one room. And you can be making some cool money. Let's say you were renting that place for 5000 a night. And let's say in a week, you have like three people lodging there. 15000 every week. You will be super rich in a month. You don't even need to worry yourself. 15000 every week. That will be 15,000 times, uh, uh, do the mathematics for me now, 60,000 in a month. You will have made 60,000 Naira in a month. How many people are earning 60,000 in civil service? Or maybe 60,000 elsewhere. So this is a very simple way to make money, extra income without any stress. And then start an online business. An online business is very difficult to start, you know. You will say, I don't have a computer. You need to go and get that computer now. Trust me, the world will leave you behind if you don't have a computer. You need a smartphone. Don't hate Facebook. Facebook is good. I don't, for me, I go to Facebook. A lot of young people go to Facebook to play. For me, Facebook is a business. For other people, it's play. They put their faces, they turn this way, they snap. They show their bum, they snap. They show their face, they snap. <laughs> I used to laugh at them. For me, it's a business. I like them, let them come. You know, as they're coming, they are, you know, they're coming, they're showing things. They don't know. Me here, I see them as customers. So me, I'm marketing products on Facebook. They are just following me. They don't know why they are following me. But I know why they are following me. Because the things I put on Facebook are very attractive. And then I don't, you know, I don't do all those pictures. For me, I don't just go and do pictures, you know, stand and post and, you know, and if it's just children and stuff. <laughs> I post important and inspiring things, things for business, personal development and Serious many people follow me, on serious people follow me as well, but as they're trying to follow me, I sell things to them and they buy from me 
For me, Facebook is a business. For people who think Facebook is just nonsense, don't say it. Facebook is a business. The guy who owns Facebook is one of the richest people in the world. Follow his footsteps. Facebook was open for business. And, and to all of you that are selling in white markets or selling everywhere, if you know internet, you see that white market, very soon people will not be coming there to buy again. People would have bought their peppers on internet. People would have bought their onions on internet. You need to go to internet. Before white markets go to internet, you should people will be buying pepper from internet and periwinkle and feeling to kunipa and they would have internet, they will sell it on internet. It's a matter of time. Don't be left behind. Don't wait until your shop is closed before you go and learn internet. I'm telling you the truth. The world has changed. If you are not on internet, you are as good as not alive again. So you need to go and get an internet. Get yourself a smartphone, a phone that can do Android, a phone that can do Facebook, a phone that can do uh, WhatsApp, a phone that can get yourself a laptop. Sit down and learn. Mommy, let's go back to school. Let's go back to school. You don't have to go to the physical classroom, but you can decide to learn from the house. Allow your children to teach you. And then imagine how beautiful that will be. You really, really need these lessons. I think it's very important for you. The next thing you need to do there is to, for online business, I teach online business. We are doing a lot of training online now. So yeah, I have my own training school and my training school is online. So uh, people will pay to learn things. What I'm teaching you here today, I, this is my service to my church. <laughs> I love you. And because you care, you loved me when I was a child. So at least Okoyo should enjoy from a child that uh, Okoyo has. <laughs> so I'm teaching you today what I teach you today people pay me on the internet to learn so but I have to teach you free because you know you're my own you're my sweet mamas <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I've told you all so you can tell stories if you know how to tell stories the next one there tell stories storytelling tell stories and get paid tell stories you can tell your stories on the internet, you can tell it everywhere, you can organize people to sit down, create a room, rent a space and call it Story Center. I've given you street business ideas. Story Center, people come in from time to time and they listen to your story and then they move on. <coughs> the next thing is that you write a book. You have life experience, you have so much field experience. Write about your problems. People can pay to read your problems. Tell how you felt that bad thing someone did to you. How you felt that time. Turn it into a story. People will read it. They should experience of life. Some of you have enjoyed good marriages. Your marriages have been very good. Turn it into a story and write about it. Maybe your marriage was not very good. Somebody can learn from it. Turn that into a book. Write about it. How did you feel when your marriage was in crisis? Your children. You, you raised your children already. The children are grown and they are doing fine. Write about it. How did you do it? People want to learn from you. You're so much rich. That's why I told you that you are money. You are walking billionaire mama. <laughs> but just like, you don't seem to see it. That's why I'm trying to turn your head a little. Mommy, please turn your head a little to this side. And I do hope that you hear me. And um, thank you very much. So the, the, in summary, I want to share these few things with you. And I do hope that it will help you. You want okay? I want to there. I want. You want okay? You have to pardon me because I've, I've spoken so much English that even sometimes I just get tired of the English like that. I've forgotten it. Not that I've forgotten, but you know, speaking a fuck now is like a bit of struggle. But I've not forgotten anyway. But I'll try to speak. So forgive me if I'm speaking very fast. Uh, I do just slow the tip a little, slow it down a little, and I will appreciate you. Thank you very much. How to start? How do you start? I've told you 20 business ideas, 20 money making ideas. Where do you want to start now? It's so big and endless. Go and ask God a question and say, God, where do I start? Don't pray too long. Just take a few days, maybe one or two days, and do fasting. Fast and pray. And ask God. I believe so much in God. 
I rarely do anything in this life without asking God. I don't know if there is anything I ever done in life without asking God. I trust so much in God, more than people think I do. And I wanted to go and ask God. I've had business, I've had money. Where do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? My business is I'm doing today. I ask of God. God gave me an idea, I present it back. I say, God, what do you think about this idea? And the very fact that God gave me the idea doesn't mean that the idea did not have that idea. Some of them had problems and they crashed me because I didn't really understand the vision. But I have to take it back to God again and God refines it again and tells me, go back and do it. To so ask God, God will give you direction. If it is what God is asking you to do, you will struggle, but you will actually get there. And you have that confidence that it's God and you also do it. You know, when we talk about will of God, people always say will of God in marriage, in church. <laughs> it's not only marriage that you find will of God. Will of God is everywhere. The mind of God. We all have to seek the mind of God in everything we do. So you need to seek the mind of God for your life. What is that thing that God knows? And when you do it, he made you, he created you. He knows the best for your life. He's the only one that can help you define that thing that you have to do. And then we have to be prayerful. That's what I have to, you have to be prayerful. Even some of us that own shops in the white market, those juju people, those witchcraft children in the market, they work better than some of us. When last did you sit in your shop and fast inside that shop? When last did you lock up that shop and say, today me and this shop will fast? We will pray in this shop. When last you call people to pray with you three days, four days, one week, seven days in this shop and say, God, we need a change. You know, with those wicked children, that are selling within the shop, in the market. Some of them, before they come down in the market, they will have spread things. I don't want to say nonsense things here. But I've watched videos with a woman went to somebody's shop and urinating in front of a person's shop and doing incantation with underwears and do other things in front of people's shop. We are walking with wolves. That's why Jesus said, I'm sending you as a sheep among wolves so you have to be wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove so you need to pray if you have never prayed you need to pray pray it is in praying that you define the will of God for your life fight believers don't be this weak weak weakling believer oh we are born again holiness cover everything if holiness does not cover fighting after being holy you have to go and fight for your life Eh? How can you remember my fighting for? <laughs> eh? How can you remember a fighting for? If you have yourself, go and fight for yourself. Okay? And you know the area boys in Calabar will say, Akbar, sir. Akbar, sir. <laughs> so, if you want to succeed in this life, in the marketplace, Akbar, sir. And, um, the other one I heard again was, you never check on ching. You never check on ching. You never check on ching. You've not seen anything yet. Too. It's when you want to do something very massive that you will see enemies will stand up. And if you turn back, don't do it. Fight. Fight for your business. Fight for everything else. Yes. Then I'll go to the next one. Return to school. Please, mommy. Return to school. It's not too late to return to school. If there is anything you want to learn, go and learn it. It's available online. Call a child to teach you. Pay money and go back to school. If you have to. If it's important. Or buy the books and read them at home. You can learn the skills again. What I want to do today is to reunite you with that child. That young girl. Of many years ago. I could see the beauty of that young girl. Innocence. Happy. Strong and stronger and better. But as that young girl was coming up, something happened on the way. The curiosity of that young girl was taken away. I want that young girl to come alive today. I told you I want to talk to that young girl that is inside you. And that young girl inside you can still learn. So I want you to take that young girl back to studies, back to learning of computer, back to learning of smartphone, back get a phone, 
If you want to sell your shoes, want to sell some of your handbags, sell them and buy yourself a laptop and a phone. The world has changed. It's not the world of some years ago. If you don't know internet in the next two, three years or five years, you will be out. They will throw you out. You know what is happening in the UK? Shops are closing down because people don't go to shops again to buy. They buy things on internet. So the physical shops in the streets are literally closing down. I mean, they are closing down. No businesses again for them because people buy on internet. Who sells on internet? The people who sell on internet, they stock things in their rooms. <laughs> Those are the smart boys, the smart girls. They stock things in their rooms and they sell it on internet. So you, you'll be opening shop, you'll be paying rent, you'll be paying for nothing. Someone is using his house, his garage for business. You, you are paying for shop space, paying for big taxes, paying for all those things. Let me tell you, the simplest way to beat all those Calabasas tax people is to sell from your room. Let's say you had an internet business and you stock all your goods inside your room. Calabasas tax people will not come and close your shop. What would they say your shops will close? They won't see. Would they say? No. So you stay on the internet and ask somebody, do you want to buy now? Put it on Facebook. I don't know. I'm sorry. Five naira will be too small. I've not bought things like that for very long time. <laughs> How much is it now? Is it 200? 1000? Okay. When I come back, I will lend that one. So, you put it on Facebook. Put it on Facebook. Put it on Facebook. And then people will, when people buy, you say hello, where are you? Okay. The person will meet you on the way, you say this is your egg banana. Egg pro go for the bank pro go for balako for toss and kick, toss and back, toss and kick down. Put your money in your pocket, your handbag. It looks like you didn't sell, but you sold. Nobody knows. In fact, you will even be people don't even know that you are doing business. So nobody will know you're afraid of thief. Thief will not even know. As soon as they're collecting the money, straight che che. Go to bank and put the money and come back. And people say there is no business today. They say, mm, my sister, and so I see you. But we thank God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> anyway, don't mind me. This is how I teach. And then, so buy books and read. The next one is I have to buy books and read. Get yourself books and read. You have to read. Get books, books on money, books on business management, how to manage your business. How to do more income, how to make more money, buy it and read. You know, we are all going to heaven. That's why we read Bible every day. If you want to be rich, you have to read book money every day. I read about money every day. Every day. I doubt if there is a day I don't listen to something about money. Every day I read about money. I read about heaven, I read my Bible every day. I don't know the day I didn't read my Bible, but maybe there was a day. But probably, even if I didn't read the whole chapter, maybe I would have read verses, maybe I would have recited because I want to go to heaven. Okay. So next thing you need to do, ask questions. Ask questions. Ask the right questions. Pick a phone call, don't be a shy. You know, this ego, how can I talk to him? How can I talk to her? No! When it has to do with money, ask the question first before you say, mm, I have asked you and you told me. That's how I do my own. The best way I do my thing is this. If I need something from you, I will drop my pride. Mm -hmm. I'll call you, hello, how are you? You say, yeah, I'm fine. And you've come again and said, I'm sorry now. I know I offended you that day, please. And you say, what do you want? So say, please, can I have this? Is I don't want to give it. I say, please, please. You know I really need it. Don't deny me. And then you give it to me. Sometimes you give it to me. I say, thank you. You may not see me again. No. Pepe, you give me what I wanted. That's the most important thing. So go down out the online. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. I remember when I was small, I went around asking people questions about life, asking people about money, asking people about... I used to... I travel long distances to ask questions. If I know that someone is doing something, I go and ask questions. Why am I not happy? Why can I do this? Why is this thing not working? Why can it work? Why can, when can it? I use your ask stupid every right questions. I just enjoy asking those questions. I don't really have all our good answers, but trust me, I, I made very good answers. 
be open-minded and spend your money wisely. Be open-minded. That's the next point. Be open-minded. Be open-minded. Be ready to learn. Not when I finish talking. So he's talking each other. See, money is important. The church needs money. The body needs money. If you're in them, they walk back. Two boys sweets. The money they kill them. You know, you know all those soup, you know, if it ever those soup that have hunchback, you know. If you want your soup, your pot of soup to have hunchback, you know, have all those cook things. When it's boiling, it's shaking. You know, there are kind of different pots of soup. I want to tell you, let me tell you. I, I like to be funny, there are different pots of soup I used to see in my mother's house. When my parent, my dad is very rich, when there is money, when my dad is coming, maybe at the end of the month when they pay them salary, the soup used to, you know, pump in the, you know, the soup will be cooking or boiling differently because there are so much things in the soup. So the soup is doing kick, 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 Anyway, it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but just tr try and cook these different kinds of soup and see what they will look like. And then the next one, they, okay, I've told you about being open-minded. Be open-minded. Money is good. Money is good for the girl. Money is good for the women. Money is good for the mothers. Money is good. <laughs> so always feel that money is good and go out. Change the orientation. Be open-minded as well and attend the next class if there is any. Attend financial classes. Whenever you hear people talk about money, organizing events around money, go and listen. It's always a new idea to learn. And the next one, be passionate. Have passion. Age. Age is just a number. Age is just a number. Don't carry it on your forehead. You are still very young. You are still that young girl. That people met some years ago. You are still that young girl. You are still young. Be passionate. Revive your passion. And be creative. The next point is to be creative. Think of think outside the box. What is a new way to do this thing? How better can we do this thing? And then the next one is that believe in yourself. Don't look down on yourself. No matter what you've been through in life, believe in yourself. Maybe I should share a story with you. And this has to do with my story. I believe so much in myself. I, I lived in my house. My, my house was, I, lived, I grew up in a Dutch house. I literally lived in a Dutch house until I finished secondary school. And um, But I made up my mind. I said, no, this house will not be my end. We don't have a Dutch house anymore. My dad, you know, built a better house. But then in life, I told myself, look, I don't need anything from my father. I want to make my own from God. I was passionate. Where I am today, not like when I say where I am today, people think I talk about UK. No, UK is just a country. I am in God. I can survive, succeed in any country because of who God has made me to become. I can thrive and succeed even in any country. The reason is because my success is from God, not because of UK, not because of Nigeria, not because of anything. When you are plugged in God and you are passionate about it, passionate about who you want to become, it becomes real. Do me a favor. I want you to take down your pen now. Write on your paper. Your childhood dream. Whom did you want to become? Think about that little girl. How beautiful, how pretty she was. The dreams she had in her head. I wanted to write those dreams down. Who did you want to become? I've said a lot of things with you. But the Bible said this kind goes no out but by fasting and prayers. So it's expected of you to pray, to seek the face of God and prayerfully get things done.
You know that people cannot succeed. They are forces that press people down. Witchcraft is real. Powers of darkness are real. But there is a power that is bigger than every other power. The Bible said the mention of the name Jesus, every knee will bow. Whether the things that are life of sin or unseen, they are supposed to bow for you. So, I want you to learn this thing and keep it to heart. And pray. Pray. All I've taught you today, you need prayers to navigate life. You need to travel on the wings of prayer fast. Pray. Pray. I have been choked with my prayer life. I can't even leave the house without praying. I can't. I have to talk to God before I leave. So you shouldn't live in life, you know, as if there is nothing wrong. Something is going on in the world. The children of darkness, the Bible says they are wiser than the children of light because they are more dedicated to their idols than we, the children of light. We operate business without prayers. We allow our children to leave the house without prayers. We do everything without prayers. I think things will go fine. Seek God and trust in Him. And I know that He will see you too. I want to thank you so much for listening to me today. And I believe we are going to pray now. Just close your eyes. And I want to pray and say, God, open my eyes to see what I have to see. Open my eyes to see what I have to see. And I know that God will do it for you.